Welcome to another painting class with Paige. If you're new here, my name is Paige and I'm the chief pixel pusher and paint brusher over at Gumption. And today we're going to be painting rainbow trout. This should be fun. We're also going to be uh, doing a little bit of drawing today. Uh, we have some new techniques that we're gonna be testing out. So get ready for a little bit of fun. Today's lesson will last a little bit longer because we're going to be, I'm actually going to be drawing along with you tonight and um, I think you're really going to enjoy it. So without further ado, I have a couple of announcements. I want to give a birthday shout out to my nephew, Andy. Uh, happy birthday, buddy. I know it's a day late, but uh, I'm thinking of you and I hope you had a great day. And um, this class will probably last about an hour and a half maybe, so um, know that. What else? Let's talk about supplies for a minute. So tonight we're going to be drawing with a regular pencil uh, to sketch out our rainbow trout, and then we're also going to be using color pencils after we use watercolor tonight to add a little bit of pizzazz and just to get used to using maybe some different techniques with watercolor. So I'm gonna be using some green colors and you can mix green colors with blue and yellow if you don't have a convenience green. Um, we're gonna be using pink and some iridescent colors. I'll be using some iridescent colors, which they're a little bit sparkly, which rainbow trout are a little bit sparkly too. Um, I'm also going to be using soda light and a little bit of orange tonight so those are the colors that we'll be touching on and colored pencils i have just chosen a few colored pencils from my supply of pencils to add embellishments later on so if you have a black colored pencil you're definitely going to need that um, and maybe a white colored pencil maybe some greens so just whip out those colored pencils. We'll be using them a little bit. Um, and if you don't have colored pencils, it's not a game changer for you. You can use watercolor at the end too. So, and we'll talk through that too. Tonight we will be missing the palette cam. So I'm sorry, I'll have to mix my palette here for you to see underneath it, my main camera here. But I think we've covered all our bases. If you're here with me and you'd like to say hello, um, say hello in chat. Uh, the Perry family already let me know that they're here. And if you're new here, you should say hello and let us get to know you. So um, you can do that below this video. And without further ado, I think we should get started. Okay, so this is the finished product. This is what we're shooting for tonight. And um, We'll get to sketching. So one of the reasons uh, I decided to sketch tonight is because these lessons go pretty fast for you guys and it kind of helps slow that down a little bit. Now if you don't want to sketch there is a downloadable image down below in the description. You can print that out and you can trace that image while we're drawing or you can transfer it to your watercolor paper and just wait for us to catch up with you. That, um, that should help make that go a little faster. So there's a lot of extra noise going on. I apologize. Um, that's just how it is tonight. It looks like one of my cameras is not working. Not sure what's going on there. So we'll just move forward. Hopefully you guys can hear me. If there are any issues with sound or anything, let me know. It's not unusual for that to be an issue. So I kind of drew this guy curved and I drew him pretty big the first time. I might draw him a little smaller this time. And I've just got a 2B pencil here, just lightly sketching out his curved body it's kind of like a half moon and his mouth these are interesting creatures I looked at a lot of different 
um, images to create this illustration. And they have this interesting mouth going on. And the eye is pretty close to this area. Their eye didn't seem to be perfectly round, so, or the pupil, I should say. I got this little. Or just do the best that you can here. And again, if you want to trace or use a, the sheet that I did for this, you can download it in the link down below. These are really beautiful fish. Of course, you can find them in Idaho. And this was a special request from my family for a rainbow trout this, this go. So that's cool. And it looked to me like their tails varied just a little bit. I guess here. And this little fin is a little bit closer here than I had it in my drawing. So the beauty of drawing it yourself is you can move it. Okay. Got a couple of fins down here. One in the back here. This guy's a little shorter than my other fella, but that's okay. He's still growing, maybe. Okay. So I think I've got all of the main parts drawn in here. How are you guys doing? I'm going to curve that a little bit more. Okay, so I'm going to erase some of my lines here because they're awful dark. So we'll adjust the camera there. And so I have this thing called a kneaded eraser. I don't know if you, you can, they look like little squares of gray eraser when you buy them in the store. What's really nice is they gently remove extra marks and they don't leave stuff behind. And you can tap them and they do a nice job of erasing out stuff you don't want. They're especially nice for watercolor paper. Fix this a little bit. Okay. So if you're waiting for me, now is a good time to mix up some green paint. And you can get green by mixing yellow and blue or using what is called a convenience color. At least make him look a little longer. OK. 
Okay. I'm gonna tap around. Okay. So now I'm gonna mix up my colors and I'm gonna scooch over my palette so you can kind of see what's happening. Sorry for the other camera being gone. I'm working on a mural and I didn't bring the right cord home. And so, it didn't quite work. Okay, so I'm using the sap green. I'm going to start out mixing some sap green. And also I'm going to be using a little bit of green gold. Now, if you are mixing your own green, you'll have one green that has a little more blue and one that's a little more yellow. See, this green gold looks pretty yellowish. Hey, Colin, thanks for tuning in tonight. It's good to see you here. I hope you're able to paint along with us tonight. I love that you guys are tuning in tonight. We must have some fish, fish lovers in here tonight. Some Idahoans. Okay, so these are the two greens I'm gonna start off with. Then I'm going to mix a little bit darker color here. And this is gonna be my sap green. And then I'm gonna add some sodalite, which is a Payne's gray or a dark gray color, if that's what you have. So you see, that can make that pretty dark. And I feel like I need a little bit more of this to get started because we're going to start off with our first green painting. Okay. Scoop this over, bring my painting back over. So, got all my water dishes in all the way. Okay. So I'm gonna use my this square brush. I would recommend a round brush if you've got one. Excuse me. I'm gonna do it because it has a little more surface area that it's gonna cover for me. And I'm going to start right along the top here and around the eye. And you can hit up this fin if you like. You can see this is just a nice sap green color. We're working wet on dry. And I'm gonna go all the way down. Whoops, can't quite see what I'm doing there. Down to the tail part. I'm even gonna get this little fin here. So next, I'm gonna dip my brush in a little bit of water, tap it, and then I'm gonna put it into my green gold. I'm going to run this guy along here. You could even, if you want to, tap a little bit here. I'm going to leave that weird ridge thing kind of alone for now. And you could dab this in water and dilute this line here even further. We'll wind up putting some pink in there. But now I'm going to go back in with my darker color. This color. I'm going to go along the top here. What we're doing here is creating some dimension. And we may have to do this a couple times.
that's okay. I'm just going to end this there. Wait, and you will hear my cats meow because they want in. <laughs> they don't understand. They most definitely don't understand, no. Just kind of trying to tap this in here so it's a little darker. Okay, so I need a paper towel here. And I am going to get into my opera pink. And it is a hot, hot pink color. And like I said, I'm also going to use iridescent paint. So I've got my opera pink here. And then I'm going to use a little bit of this iridescent paint that I got that someone made. This isn't one that I made. But it's, let's see if we can catch it on here. I don't know if you can see that or not. Maybe you can there. That iridescence. Whoops, let's go back out. Okay, so I gotta get this guy while he's still wet a little bit. So I'm gonna take my pink and I'm gonna kind of mix it into this yellow color and bring it down along the body here. Kind of is turning into this peachy color. We can get more pigment in there. And run it through here. I kind of flared out here on the tail, so I'm going to do that. Gonna dip into my iridescent paint and drop it in here because this is all so, so wet still. Don't worry, we're gonna layer this a little bit. So we'll kind of let that part dry, hopefully. Now I have this other color that's kind of a gray color. And if you wanted to achieve this color, you could use a blue and really dilute it. That's what I would use. Um, I'm using this particular gray color. It also is iridescent, but you don't have to have this color. I would just get a little bit of ultra blue and really dilute it a lot for our next step. So I'm going to put this on my palette and you can see just how light this color is on the palette. Um, it's pretty darn light and because this is a handmade paint, I didn't make this one either. It's pretty light. It takes quite a bit to, to get it dark. But what you want is a light tone like this, whether it be a gray or a light blue for the bottom part of the fish, because we still need to get the bottom part here. And I'm just gonna bring this up so you can see. So this is where I'm using that kind of iridescent gray color to give this guy shape and form as well. So, I'm gonna go in here, this area. And I'm not gonna do his fin just yet. We're gonna kinda go around that and underneath. And we'll do some some glazing or some layering here, so I might just let that bleed into there just a little bit, just for fun, for watercolor's sake. And I can see over here that I'd like to add some green, so I'm just going to use a little bit of my sap green and bring it in there.
Now, it's funny because I joke when I teach. Um, these guys look really weird until they have their eyeballs in. So maybe we'll work on his eyeball here after some of this kind of dries around his eye. And mine looks pretty dry. Okay, so I'm gonna need a much smaller brush. So this is a super small brush. I don't expect you to have one that is this small. Hopefully you have one that might be, let's see, where's my pink brush? Even this size, this is a pretty small brush too, and it will do a nice job for you too. If not, just work with the tip of your, the brush that you have. So he kind of has this outer ring happening. So I'm just going in with my a little bit of darker green to create this ring here. And then I'm going to dip into my sodalite, which is this dark gray color. If you have paints gray, it's essentially the same color. So I'm going to get some pigment, get my brush wet, get some pigment on it and move to the eye here. And that really looks dark. I might feel like that's a little too dark. So I'm going to dip my brush in some water and dry it off with my paper towel and just lift a little bit of that pigment. Just lighten it up a little. Okay. So we have some nice blending here. Let's see if I can zoom in for you. Like this is pretty fun here. I don't know if you can see the iridescence in this guy yet, but we're working on it. He's kind of the, he might be the short version of a rainbow trout. So next, maybe while this guy is drying, because you see I have this pool of water there, I am going to work on his tail. And I guess I should ask, how are you guys doing as far as time goes? Do you need a little more time here? before I move on. So I'm gonna mix in a little bit of my pyrrole, or it's transparent pyrrole orange. It's just, you can make your own orange by mixing yellow and red. If you don't have an orange color in your palette, that's a really beautiful orange color. I love this orange, and I'm not generally a fan of orange. I'm going to dilute it quite a bit for the tail here. Oh, awesome. Glad everybody's doing well, Laurel. You're not moving too fast, hopefully. Okay. So one color I forgot to mention is purple because these guys are, I looked at several photos and one had kind of purple in his tail and I thought, ooh, I really like that a lot. So if you have purple or you want to mix your own purple with blue and red, you can do that. So I'm just tapping this orange in here and then I'm going to get a little bit of purple I'm not going to have it too strong. I want to dilute it a little bit so it can be nice and blend nicely here. This poor guy has a little short tail. And if it gets a little too much in my orange and I don't want it there, then I can take my brush and suck up the paint a little bit and reintroduce 
the orange here. And then this guy has a little bit of green on the end of his tail. Now my nephew Andy, he's pretty creative, so he uh, oftentimes uses his creative license and you are welcome to do that too here if you would like. So I'm tapping in a little more purple here. It's starting to just kind of all blend together, but it's okay. It'll all come together in the end. Okay, so I'm still waiting on this area to dry. Now I'm waiting for this area to dry. I may even try to tap a little more green here at the end. See how that watercolor just flows? More than likely, I'll come back to this tail and clean up some areas that I would like to. We'll let this dry though, for now. Okay, so we're gonna move to the fins now. And I'm gonna use a round brush. This is probably a four, maybe. And I'm going to put some more green in my upper fin here. Now see, I've got water here on my brush that will wind up on my page and I, not right where I don't want it. So I'm just going to wipe that off a little bit. We will have to kind of go back in and darken this fella. So if you're feeling like yours is not looking dimensional, fear not, we will fix it. So you, I've painted in here. If I want to, um, I can dry off my brush and pull out some lines for his fins. I'm just lifting. Gotta make sure you don't get your hand in your tail there. This might be a little too wet and maybe it won't lift well, but you can see that technique there. And it's probably, it's one of my favorites. Okay. And he has another green fin up here at the top. I am going to get an even smaller brush, this little brush, and I'm going to paint that guy. So I'm just going to go in and introduce some darker paint here, kind of go around this fin to separate it a little bit from the body. I might even go in with a little bit darker green, the one that I mixed with sodalite, and just tap it in there. You could even do that here if you want. <laughs> Carla really wants in and just can't understand why she's not included. Okay, I'm going to put some green in this fin too, and I'm actually starting over here on the right side of this fin with this green gold. It really looks really kind of yellowish. Then I'm going to go in on this side, my sap green. Maybe just a of that darker green. Okay. 
Okay. We can do the rest of these fins too. So uh, the lower fins are kind of pinky orangey for this demo. And I'll, again, I'll bring up my example here so you can kind of gauge what we're shooting for. So we have some kind of pinks, pinky, peachy colors down below. So I'm going to put a little pink in here. Maybe do it on this side too. And then I might add a little bit of this orange color and let them mix here. Doing the same over here. And since I have my pinks out, I can see a, uh, my pink and orange, I can see my orange kind of just blended in here. So I might refine the tail just a little bit while you're finishing your fins there and painting them. I'm gonna go into the tail. It's dry. So I'm just going to put a little bit of orange in here. <laughs> we'll see how that turns out there. Okay, so while that stuff is uh, drying, and I didn't paint this guy in the background, there's this other fin. I'm gonna use a cool color um, on that guy, and I'm not gonna introduce that color until this front fin is dry so it doesn't blend together. My poor kitty Harlow. Okay. So next, I'm going to introduce another um, wash here of a darker green color so we can start really getting this feel for, for this guy. So I need to mix my paint again. You can kind of, I'll show you. This is the color that I'm going to use. And I may even add more sodalite to this. Kind of see what we can get here. And I I want to curve this part down a little bit. I'm working around his eye. Whoops. like we can even go darker here but no if you don't get what you're looking for in your first pass you can always go back over to get more darkness or more definition like I may even introduce a little bit of my sap green here So now he's starting to have a little bit of dimension. And I think 
with this little brush, I'm going to go in along this edge. It's a little bit darker value. I'm going to add a little more sodalite to my mixture here. That's a lot of sodalite. Let's see if we can still keep the green. And I'm just going to kind of move this along this edge and see if it, you can even tap it along the edge. But what I see is that I have to take that bead all the way down. So I'm putting down my brush. I'm going to draw this guy all the way down the body and let go of that bead. That's the bead. So he's starting to, to look good. I think I gave him a little extra chin here. You can also, now that this area is dry, you can use that same soda light color on this fin area if you want. Since we're hanging out, I'm going to try to preserve my lighter areas here. That's dark. And you can keep layering like this. Um, if you want to soften, uh, let's see. If we want to soften this line here, if you don't like that hard line, you can take your brush, dip it in water. And I tap mine on my uh, napkin. And then you can just feather that edge just a little bit, and it will soften it. Looks like it's lifting a little bit, but. That is how I soften an edge. So he's starting to look like somebody now. So I can see in this image here, some of the things that we can do next is work around his eye and add some darkness here and define this area here. So we'll do that next. My guy is still a little bit wet, so I'm going to define this mouth area. And I'm just using this sap green. I've kind of shaded this top area. I might add a little, a little darker green there. This actually kind of comes up here. I will do that. His bottom jaw here. This kind of comes this way. So you kind of are bre or drawing a little bit with your brush. And this guy here is a little bit darker connecting to the gill part. So we'll define that. Okay, how are you doing? He's looking like a chubby little rainbow trap. Okay, 
So I'm going to go back into my gray color. This color, I'm going to do another layer of that down here to continue giving this little guy some dimension. So you can use a Payne's gray or light blue here. Whatever you got. And my gray is sort of turning green because of my little paint left there. And I'm just going to bring this up underneath. I'm also going to do a little bit more here. Make his big chin kind of recede a little. Cool. So I see when I'm looking at this, I don't know if you will be able to see it. You can see where my area there is wet. Turn this light on. There you go. So you can see the wet area, but there's a lot of iridescence here. And it's very peachy. So I'm going to add a little more hot pink because that's my jam. And if you ever take my classes, you know I dig the hot pink. So I'm going to add a little bit there and I'm just going to kind of feather it out a little bit. It looks like it's taken it away. Okay. And I'm going to get some more. Now, if you don't have opera, you can use uh, quinacridone magenta or any kind of pinky rosy color that you might have. Let's switch brushes here. Rainbow trout have such beautiful colors. And when they're wet, you know, you see these pictures of them wet and they're just gorgeous for fish. Okay. So I still feel like this guy, I need to, well, actually, let's work on his eye really quickly sometimes that can really help make your painting come together if it feels a little off if you haven't painted your animals eyes they look a little weird they don't look right so i'm tapping in some green gold in here around the pupil and then they also have quite a bit of dark um, around their eyes. So I'm going to bring this guy back. So we're shooting for something that looks kind of like this here. Some darker around the eye to make that eye pop. So I'm going to dip into my dark green. I, on the outside here. Kind of like winged eyeliner a little bit. Just 
bring it out straight. And now that just flew right into all of my other area. So if that happens and you're, you dump a bunch of paint in there, you can just tap it with your paper towel and hopefully you can go back to work. I'm just going to draw that out. I'm probably going to have to wait until that dries a little bit. So I'm also going to go around this weird upper lip thing. So technical, I know. I'm going to darken this outline here. And I feel like his, his nose needs to be um, pointier or something. So you can kind of, you're kind of drawing while you're painting as well, especially when you're working with value. So I'm just going around and kind of fixing these areas where I see needs to be a little bit of definition. We also need to address our fins. So I'm going to go into this guy here, add a little more dark pigment. You can even Draw some lines on the fins here. Clean up this guy a little bit. If you feel like yours needs a little cleanup, you can too. Going to clean up the lines around this tail because it looks kind of like a hot mess. So I'm dipping into my darker color. It's a lot of sodalite here. It's going to go define my outline here a little bit. So if you notice, I have paint all over my hands it's because I've been painting today, painting this really cool kid's room. And the mural is so fun. It's a jungle theme. I mean, I'm pretty sure my nephew Andy would agree and my nephew Sam that being a kid pretty much rocks, except for maybe if you have to, you know, abide by rules, that's not all that fun, but being a kid is pretty fun. Okay, so I still feel like this guy needs some more definition. Obviously his eye needs to, I need to do a little work on his eye. So I'm going to go back, I gotta find the, just the perfect brush. Let's see if this one works with my dark color, my dark green color. I 
just don't know if it's dark enough, guys. I think I'm going to have to add some sodalite, so I'm happy with it. And this is kind of, this is really how I work. How I work in layers and I keep adding. Normally I'm moving the bead in one direction uh, to keep it going the right way. And that's what I tell my students to do, but sometimes I break my own rules. So I'm just taking this dark color and I'm defining this bottom area too. So I'm feeling better about this. I feel like um, it's just a line right now, so I need to fix that a little bit. And I'm gonna do that because it's dried so quickly for the most part, I'm just gonna bring in a little more pigment here. This is kind of a combination of that dark color and the sap green. I'm happy with that. I'm also going to go back into this upper thing. Maybe just make that front part a little bit darker. Okay, I'm feeling a little bit better about this. His eyes are still sort of sad, but we'll get there. Okay. Now we're going to work on the rest of our fins. We're getting kind of close to wrapping this guy up. Um, so for my pink fins, I might take um, a mixture of my hot pink and my orange color. So I've got kind of this intense pinky color and draw in some fin lines here. Those are pretty fun. Okay, let's do this bottom one. I'm gonna do the outside here too. Sweet, I'm feeling good about those. And I think while, um, I think I can go in this area with a little bit of blue or your purple. We've mixed a purple earlier. I think I'll use the purple. And just define this back fin. Okay. I'm not super happy with my tail, so I'm going back in with my purple color. That's going to make 
we like it a little bit more. I'm gonna soften that edge a little. So it kind of moves into the orange. And then I'm going to finish off the bottom of the tail with some of the sap green. And I have a little um, edge here, I can soften that. A bit too. Okay, so I'm still drying, so I'm going to adjust kind of the bottom part of this fish. I might add a little blue to my gray color. It's a lot of blue. So you can kind of see what I'm doing here. That's quite a bit of blue. I need a little bit more water in here, I think. Feel free to pop any questions that you might have down below as we're moving along. Okay, so I'm just doing this down along the bottom and along this weird jaw thing. In hopes that it gives him a little bit of dimension. Okay. I think his eye is kind of dry. So if you're working on other stuff, I'm going to go back into this eyeball. I'm going to conquer the eye once and for all. So this is sodalite. have this really teeny tiny brush and I recommend anybody who is doing watercolor has something like that because it really can if you are doing detailed images it can really help give you some of that detail you might want I kind of love the little brushes so I use them quite a bit. Okay, so I've done the outline there. That's helping. I'm putting a little green gold in here. Scrubbing a little to see if I can uh, maybe lift some color there. And then I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you two ways to put a little bit of white in the eye. One is by lifting. So I'm taking my little brush here with clean water and I'm scrubbing back and forth in that pupil. Take my paper towel and I dab it and it gives you a little bit of light color. So I might want to go around here and oh, I didn't mean to do that. The problem with little brushes is you get a little bit of water on the ferrule and it'll drop right down into what you're doing. And you don't want it to. Okay, so we are, what else do we need to paint before we can go into the colored pencil? Oh, you know, I need to put his little gills in here. Oops. Oops. So I'm going to do that. my sodalite. Oh, 
Okay. So I have a little bit of drying to do here, but I think it's safe to move into our colored pencils. Just so you can get the experience of doing that. And if you have paint and you don't have colored pencils, we'll keep painting. You'll do the same thing that you're doing with your paint um, that we are with our brushes. Sorry for that loud. -ness. Okay, so these are the pencils that I have to help me define areas of my fish. I have a couple of greens, I have some blue and I have some white. And I have black because one of the important things about these fish is they have black dots everywhere. So I'm going to put the example painting up so you can kind of take a look at this and what we're shooting to do. So if you need to shade more in these areas because you want a little more definition, you can do that with a pencil or you can conti continue doing that with your paint. Um, what we will do here once my paint dries is we'll go ahead and put in all these little dots here and you can put in some defining um, areas like around the eye and around the nose. I have a highlight here on the nose. Um, you can intensify color as well. So let's see if my this little guy is dry. He's still a little bit damp, but I think I can I can get in there and work on him a little bit. So because his eye is bothering me so much, I'm going to take my white um, colored pencil here and just kind of lighten around the eye here. And like I told you, we I was going to show you another way to put that white color in the eye. You can just use your colored pencil. And create that light color. Now if you overdo it, you can go back in with your black. And fix that up. Now this these guys have a little bit of dark around their eyes and this kind of line here so I'm gonna lightly color over the top with my pencil in these areas. I also want to kind of shade this area a little bit so the sky's really the limit. Um, if you struggle with watercolor this might be a fun way for you to um, work with watercolor is this combination of colored pencil and watercolor. So I'm just kind of tidying up spots. This area is still pretty wet, I think. So I'm going to try to avoid that, and you'll probably want to do the same. Avoid those wet areas. It'll put a hole in your paper. But I think I can start doing some of these, these dots. And there are a ton of them. That's why it's kind of nice to do this with a pencil. If you don't have a pencil, you can just use the tip of your brush with your darkest color of paint. That might be black or a Payne's gray color. And if you need to, I'm not sure where my sharpener went, but sharpen your pencil if you need to. You'll definitely get better dots that way. 
And in these areas, they have a few dots from what I could see from the examples that I used. But the majority of their dots are close together at the top, and then they kind of fade out as they go down into the pink area. And I kind of have to go around this area because it's still wet for me. What's fun about these guys is they also have dots on their fins. So you can just follow some of your lines that you painted in there. If you have any fun stories about rainbow trout, feel free to share them with us. I am not a fish expert, but you might have some fun fishing tales to share. I'm just defining that edge a little bit more. Adding more dots. I'll sprinkle a few here. I mean, they have so many dots, your hand might get tired. So I'm gonna also work on this little side fin. If you need to clean up edges or something, you can use your pencil to do that. Or if you want to deepen your fins here, you can do that by using your pencil. And as I kind of move to the belly, I did a lighter touch on my little dots and just sprinkled a few through here. And you know, uh, you're probably aware of this, but of course there's the art of stippling, which is also um, a technique in drawing where you create little dots. And the closer that they are together, the more, the darker that area appears. And when they're more wide apart, um, that creates a lighter value. So you're also kind of doing that with this painting as you're putting the dots together, closer together up here and then sprinkling them down here. And I'm just kind of 
going along here trying to fill in some of these spaces a little bit. And then of course down the tail they kind of are in lines down the tail like this just next to each other. And they're pretty close together in the tail. And they have dots in all their fins as well. In these areas, they're sprinkled kind of in these areas that attach to the body. So if you're moving really fast and you're ahead of me, you can put your little dots in the fins. So if you do want to do this exercise again, uh, feel free to grab that download that's down below. Sometimes my students repaint things that they've painted. If you have any questions, now is a good time to throw them down in the chat. I'm going to add a little pink here. My guy's got a big, a big lower chin area here. Be really interested to see how your rainbow trout turned out. If your hands are cramping due to all your little dots that you're putting in there. Well, I'm not sure what's happening with my camera here. I'm frozen. Frozen in time. Okay, there we, we actually have a camera now. Okay, we were frozen for a bit. Okay, so how are you guys doing? How did you do on your rainbow trout? Uh, was it fun? Let me know. Um, play around with colored pencils and watercolor. I think that you'll really enjoy the combination, especially if you find that you struggle a little bit with watercolor. Um, feel free to use colored pencil. Make it fun for yourself because that is the point of, of all of it, right? It re gives you relaxation and also you're learning at the same time and you can create at the same time. So thanks for joining me tonight. If you're interested in checking out some of my other videos, I have some other tutorial videos that are up on my channel and um, will be coming each Wednesday as I release them. 
also I want to do a big shout out to Colin Jackson. Thanks for being a Patreon supporter. It helps allow me to put on these classes and uh, bring you watercoloring fun. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and throw them down below before we go for the night. Uh, yeah. I hope you had fun tonight and uh, I hope that you um, are exercising some new techniques and experimenting with different kinds of paints, whether it be iridescent paint or opaque paint, um, colored pencils. It's there to play with and to explore. So, Okay, so I don't see any questions down below. You're feel, feel free to pop them down in the comments below and I'll answer them this week. If you're, if you're uh, playing along and come on to a problem or an issue, uh, go ahead and shoot me a comment. But thank you for tuning in. Uh, I really enjoyed this lesson and I hope you did too. And I hope you were able to keep up uh, painting. And so until next week, um, I'll see you next week. And thank you so much for tuning in. Talk to you later. <laughs>